I've been posting commentary on the Bill Cosby allegations quite often, partly because I am not convinced people understand just how important everything happening with this situation actually is from a legal standpoint. This situation has been and is still wide open for several opportunists to jump on board and these opportunists are causing a hemorrhage of constitutional rights for their own personal gain in this Bill Cosby witch hunt. Many people don't even realize this at all, but every time they execute another completely unconstitutional or unethical action against Bill Cosby, it permanently affects every one of us as a new unethical legal precedent is set. Believe me, we are all going to pay for this. This bloodthirst for Bill Cosby is costing American citizens in myriad ways. The newest attack on our rights and protections is the unethical decision to go after Bill Cosby's wife, Camille Cosby. There are specific spousal laws in place, including locally in the state of Massachusetts where she was being deposed, that are supposed to protect the sanctity of matrimony. So with very few exceptions, like in cases dealing with serious crimes done to children, spouses are never to be forced to testify against one another. That would be wrong, and it had been decided on long ago that we would not allow things that would circumvent matrimony. Well, it looks like we've thrown very clear spousal laws out the window as attorney Joseph Camerata petitioned the court to depose Camille Cosby and succeeded. The argument had been made that although she is Bill Cosby's wife, Camille Cosby was also his business manager for some time, and therefore that angle could be used to get her in court and depose her. In reality, that was very foolish, overzealous, misguided and wrong because in the world of ethics and common sense one-time business manager does not trump or override wife the people are talking support for the accusers is dwindling due to new revelations and legal minds for or against Cosby are agreeing there really was no point in deposing Camille Cosby save to embarrass her and to continue to rattle Bill Cosby. Everyone has wanted to hear from this woman, Nancy, and today a legal team in Springfield, Massachusetts finally did. Getting Camille Cosby to answer questions under oath is putting heat on Bill Cosby. For instance, in this hallway where the deposition is taking place in one of the rooms, they've actually put up a black curtain to block all media. Bill Cosby has denied all wrongdoing. And he and Camille have been married for 52 years. Now, generally speaking, their communications are protected by the state's marital privilege laws. But because Camille also worked as her husband's business manager, it left plaintiffs with an opening. I expect that there are going to be a lot of very intrusive personal questions asked. She can't really do anything for the prosecution. And it wasn't worth the violation of constitutional rights that is now a new precedent. There's nothing judicial about any of this. Because this fabricated obsession with demonizing and punishing Bill Cosby at all costs is in full effect, it is opening a Pandora's box for more of our rights to be given up in pursuit of him. And it's keeping the door wide open for more opportunists to come through with another agenda, at the core of which has nothing to do with justice for victims. Rumor has it that Joseph Camerata has been spotted and heard on the days of the court proceedings trying to ingratiate himself with members of the press, even inviting some to dinner. It's becoming apparent that so many people involved have ulterior self-serving motives and justice is not the real goal. The defamation lawsuit uh, is concerned with who is telling the truth. Is it the seven ladies that, that we represent, uh, or is it Mr. Cosby? Mr. Cosby, uh, you know, filed a counterclaim. Says, I'm the truth teller. Uh, the women say, wait a minute. Uh, we were branded liars. We are the truth tellers. And so here we are now. Uh, there's a battle of, over credibility because, uh, let's face it, these, these, uh, these events occurred over a good number of years. Uh, and, and, and so she would have, would be in a unique position to observe, 
uh, to understand without any discussion and of any communication with her husband as to whether or not this type of behavior was going on. Behind the scenes, there have been genuine elected officials making genuine commentary. Evan Slavitt is a former assistant U.S. attorney and former Republican candidate for Massachusetts Attorney General. And he refers to this entire Cosby situation as a colossal waste of time. In an article featured in the Boston Herald, Slavitt says, the United States District Court in Springfield should have sent the plaintiff's lawyers packing with a good scolding. Massachusetts law is clear. Except in very limited circumstances, a person cannot be forced to testify against his or her spouse on conversations that take place during the marriage. This spousal privilege is based on the idea that spouses should be allowed to talk to each other freely without fear that some third party will nose their way into the most intimate of relationships. Slavit was absolutely right. Now because of this overly ambitious nonsense, a new precedent may have been set. This has become a circus full of grandstanding opportunists, broken deals, ignored constitutional rights, and altered legal precedents. Now the question is, how many of our rights as we know it are going to go by the wayside, and how many more unconstitutional things are going to be done by the time this circus comes to an end?